Christian man sentenced to death in Pakistan for alleged blasphemy as a minor. Okay, this, just emotionally prepare yourself to get like really angry, okay. In 2020, a trial court in Pakistan sentenced Shahzad Masih, Masi, an innocent Christian man, to death by hanging for allegedly committing blasphemy against the Prophet Muhammad when he was still a child. Shahzad was only 16 years old when he was falsely accused of a crime he did not commit. In 2017, during a discussion about religion that his co-worker named Jalali initiated, Shahzad had mentioned to Jalali that his father's friend would make disparaging comments when he heard about people who have Muhammad in their names. Jalali, and a member of an extreme Islamic group, used this information to label Shahzad a blasphemer. Superintendent of police who investigated the case gave a testimony in court that said, during my investigation, I did not declare Shahzad Masih guilty. Members of the Tariqi Tahafuz e Islam, which translates to the movement to protect Islam, and several other Islamic clerics routinely attended the court hearings to threaten the judge that if he did not punish, excuse me, if he did not punish such as Shazad, they will kill him with their own hands. The American Center for Law and YouTube, Justice. For YouTube, we're just reading the news. We yeah. do not endorse violence upon anybody. This was us just reading what's happening in Pakistan. This was, you know, this is just the news. These are not our opinions, but go ahead. The American Center for Law and Justice, or ACLJ, a Christian based legal organization in the U.S., filed a com formal complaint with the United Nations Working Group on Arbitrary Detention regarding this unjustified punishment. So there's like so much about this that is so messed up. I'll provide a little bit more detail. So this guy, I mean, if you don't know anything, like just know that Christians in Pakistan are like treated worse than second class citizens. So this kid was like 16 years old. He's working as a janitor. And um, he's talking to one of his coworkers, and his coworker is part of some pretty intense Islamic group. And the coworker initiates a conversation with this kid, Shazad, and starts talking to him about Muslim prophets and Christian prophets. And Shazad just offhandedly mentioned that not him, not his father, his father's friend Ali makes disparaging comments when he hears that someone has the name Muhammad. And this apparently pissed off his coworker Jalali. And so Shazad, he's he's 16. He says that he doesn't really know anything about religion, blah, blah, blah. He ends up going home. Later, he's summoned by this Tariqi, um, Tariqi Tahafuz -e Islam group to a local cell phone shop. And at this cell phone shop, they start like accosting him. And then they bring him to a masjid. And then they end up bringing him to the police. Mosque. Masjid say mosque. People don't know. Okay, that. mosque. And, or some, some, or maybe I think it was a madrasa, like a school. Anyways. Um, and then the police end up filing a case against him. So Pakistan has numerous blasphemy codes on the books. And particularly uh, 295C is one that is particularly vague. And even under 295C, which is the broadest, most vague interpretation of this penal code, even by that standard, this crime does not meet this standard. This kid did not commit a crime. I mean, he just said somebody I know has these views and they like kidnapped him. And now reported to police and the police actually took it seriously. They pressed charges against him. He's been in jail for the past six years, five years. Six ye uh, five years for just saying like, I know a guy that doesn't like the names Muhammad and it's not even me. I'm just telling you that I just know a guy that doesn't like this. And he's already been in jail for five years for that. The police and superintendent that investigated him said that I never thought that he was guilty of this. I did not declare him guilty. The prosecution had like zero legitimate arguments, right? And they 
still sentenced this guy to death for a comment he made when he was a child. Hey, but someone else, it's not even his own views. This is not a crime, even by Pakistani blasphemy standards. So wait, wait, so they should, uh, so if he is commenting about somebody else and he's arrested and now sentenced to death, well, then the people who reported him should also be arrested because they're also talking to the police about this man's views. And then the police should get arrested because the police has to explain what this man's views are. So arrest everybody. The judge should be arrested because the judge has to declare the statement for what crime. If you mention the crime, you should also get arrested. <laughs> like, let's just arrest everybody. Let's just arrest. Oh my God. So part of it is obviously because this man is a Christian. So he's incredibly vulnerable. If you don't know anything, you should know that the blasphemy laws in Pakistan are talk. Ru routinely used to just take out personal beef that you have with people. You have a personal problem with someone, just accuse them of blasphemy and they will either get lynched on the street or they will get carted off to prison where they could face the death penalty and then yes. live on death row for the rest of their life. Yeah, so just to let you guys know, the, the government actually doesn't carry out these death sentences. Like, no, the government doesn't execute anybody. They just give you a death sentence and basically just rot in jail. Um, and even if you're freed, now you have to worry about the mob because you were accused of blasphemy and the people are angry that the government doesn't carry out the executions and they want to take the law into their hand, okay? Um, I mean... I've seen don't videos just... of Shias getting axed on the street for alleged blasphemy just casually chopped up on the street unbelievable jesus christ like um, there are so many levels to this that are absolutely absurd the only positive that i can think of is that this law this american law firm that advocates for christian rights in other countries like they have had some success with other cases before by pressuring using the U United Nations as a lever to help get what they want out of the Pakistani government. So they are fighting for this kid. But like, even if they are successful, that will take years before anything comes of it, right? So this, it, it, there's so many instances, there's so many more details about how this group has explicitly intimidated the entire court system. Awesome is asking, um, are they giving these verdicts based on interpretation of laws, just like in, in Islamic Republic? I'm assuming they're giving out these verdicts based on saving their own asses. Okay? So this, these verdicts have nothing to do with their interpretation of the law or Islam. They just look at, should I arrest this guy or should I face the mob? So the police... Here's the difference. Yeah, the judge and the police are basically trying to like, it's better for this guy's life to be ruined than my life to be ruined. So I'm just, it's just mobs pressuring the justice system into giving into their view. Basically. In Iran, the court system is used to terrorize the population. In Pakistan, yes. the court system is scared of the population. <laughs> yes, the terror goes the other way. So yeah. It's basically you're right, exactly. The justice system, the courts terrorizes the people in Iran. In Pakistan, the mob terrorizes the justice system. <laughs> so god damn it. Wow. Yeah. Um there have been defendants anyway, who were assassinated in the middle of court because of blasphemy. I mean, yeah. Salman Tasir, who was the governor of Punjab, the most populated state, was assassinated by his own bodyguard just for saying that we should give mercy to a woman accused of blasphemy. Like, the fear is real. I'm not going to act like it's unfounded, you know? Um, okay, by the way, Secular Sakai just got five more memberships for people here. So, yay! Thank you, wow, Secular Sakai. amazing! And one night, heathen is saying, can I get a membership, please? I'm a heathen. I'm a heathen. It's in my name. <laughs> no. Yeah, I think that you don't choose who you're giving the memberships to. I think when you give membership by memberships for others, just randomly picks whoever mm. is live watching a couple of people.
people. Yeah, but thank you, Secular Sakai. There's that. Also, Suzanne, can you check the microphone you've selected, like just to make sure that it's the right person? Oh, okay. All right. While I go yeah. to the next. Okay, cool. Um, can I uh, clap for the next news? Or <laughs> this is so funny. Sasan is saying, one day, and that day may come soon, I will become an atheist or public member, a CEO, a hell CEO. I will rise to the top. <laughs> <laughs> Sasan, well, like thank you. Only do that if you can financially afford it. You know, put yourself first. Yes. Oh, 10 more. Silva just got 10 more again. Oh Amazing. God. Look, everybody's. You members. get a membership. You get a membership. <laughs> Everyone gets a membership. Thank you so much. Look at this. Even even our fellow Christian here. No, no not fellow. Even our token Christian here. No <laughs> That's discrimination. No discrimination. Our um, even the Christians in our community can become a Satan's minion. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, yeah, Mariam, how do you feel as a Christian? How do you feel about being a, a Satan's minion? You can now get the sexiest blasphemous art ever known to mankind for free. Too sexy to show most of it here on YouTube. We draw Muhammad, Hindu goddesses, sexy hijabi art, Jesus, Mother Mary, Japanese God, Greek gods, and much, much more. Click on the link below where it says get our free blasphemous art.